welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I post a lot of content regarding the Zoom R20 multi-track recorder that you see here. And when I post those videos, people are leaving comments at the bottom of all of those videos with their questions. And a lot of their questions have to do with troubleshooting some of the problems that they're encountering when they're using the R20. And a lot of the problems that could be solved by diving through the menus and selecting the right features and making sure they have the right options turned on or off. Other times, if you're running into other glitches, you just have to turn the power off and turn the power back on sometimes and reset the system. Just like with a computer, you'd restart the computer. But there's other times that you may be running into a lot of problems and you're having a lot of continuous difficulties. You're turning the system on and off and that's still not solving the problem where you may have to perform a factory reset. This would be the same kind of factory reset that you would use on a computer when the computer starts to bog down, become very slow. You need to reset it all the way back to factory settings, start fresh, and then go from there. Do the same thing on tablets, phones, Apple Watches, Fitbits, and so on. So the R20 is really no different. It's an electronic device, and sometimes there's just weird glitches that happen. People have said that they have glitches with recording and recording problems. One thing to note is that if you just received an R20, it probably came with version firmware 1.00, and Zoom has admitted that there were some recording bugs with version 1.00, where sometimes it would just blank out and not record anything. If you do have the R20 on version 1.0, I do recommend you upgrade it and update it to the newer uh, versions. But sometimes that still won't fix the problems that you're encountering. Other people have mentioned that they've had problems with the effects that are on the R20 where they're either trying to customize the effects or they're using specific patches where it's just not turning on or it's not doing anything to whatever sounds coming through the input. And a factory reset seemed to help some of those people with their problems. I recently had a problem where the Bluetooth adapter, the BTA1 Bluetooth adapter, just wasn't initializing uh, on my R20. I had used it many times before and synced it with the iPad, no problems. Then all of a sudden, when I was turning it on, I just couldn't get this thing to initialize, initialize even if I was putting the Bluetooth adapter in and out of the, the side slot that it's supposed to be here. And what I found was that a factory reset solved the problem, and I haven't had any issues since. So sometimes you run into these little weird glitches or bugs with the device and you do have to perform that factory reset. I thought that I would just walk you through what the factory reset procedure looks like. It's pretty straightforward and simple, but this way you know what it's going to look like when you have to perform it. Hopefully you don't, but if you do have to perform it on your R20 device. Okay, I just want to show you a couple different things pertaining to the settings before we do the factory reset, and then I'll show you what those settings look like after the factory reset. So we are on the project settings screen. I'm going to hit the cog at the top to go through the settings, and we'll go all the way down to the bottom for the system settings. And this part here says firmware version. We can touch that, and it will give you your firmware version. You can see that I'm on version 3.00, which at the time of this uh, filming this video, that's the most current version that Zoom has released. So if we go back out of the system settings and we open up a project, I've got this one project just says screens here. I will open that up. You can see it has four tracks that are visible. I will just select track one and hit track settings then on track one. All right, you can see that I have my EQ settings set for track one. You can also see that I have an effect send level here and I do have a send effect that is custom one in slot number 48 for my effect patches. So I've, I've built a custom effect here in one of these empty slots. You also have the preloaded effects that are one through 40, but I'm using my custom effect on number 48. Okay, so I'll back out of that and then we will Go all the way back to the project settings. All right, so we're back here. And once I'm in the project settings screen, I'll go to these settings down to the bottom. And now we want to perform the factory reset. Well, we just have to touch factory reset and a pop-up will appear. You'll get this box that will ask you, do you want to perform the factory reset? cancel or execute, we simply say execute. Just takes a second, 
and it'll tell you to then power off the device. So I'll do that right now. You just power it down, wait a second, and then you can power the device back up. We'll go through the splash screen and then I'll show you that some of the settings have been changed, but others haven't. So you could already see that the firmware is version 3.0. The date and the time have been deleted, so you have to input those again. I'm just gonna hit done for now. And we're back to the project settings screen. I'll go to the settings here, down at the bottom, and you can see for the firmware version, we are indeed still on version 3.00. If we back out and then go to our projects that we have open, I could scroll down here and we'll go to that project that's labeled screens. If I open that up, you can see my tracks are still in place and all the tracks are in place for all of my projects. If I go to track settings for track number one and select that, you could see that my EQ settings for each track are still intact. Those haven't moved. The send level is still where it was before, but when I get to my effects now, I'm no longer on custom number one, which was my custom effect that I built and I had it on slot number 48. Now slot 48 is back to being empty. So it does delete your changes that you, you've made on the effects. So if you made the effects effect changes for any of your patches directly on the R20, or if you made it on Guitar Lab and you're using that, it's gonna go back to the factory defaults when it comes to the effects. But everything for your projects will still be intact. All that information about the track settings, the EQ settings that you may have implemented, those things will still remain after the factory reset, but you will lose all of your effects. You'll have to set the date and time, no big deal there. Um, but otherwise, the effects are really the main thing that you're going to be um, missing out on and you're gonna to have to deal with in terms of building those up again and creating them for yourself. So again, if you are running into problems and any kind of random glitches, I do recommend that you try to dive through the settings on the R20, see if that's going to fix your problem by adjusting things. If that doesn't work, I think just turning the device off, waiting a couple seconds, turning it back on, that might solve your problem. But if you still are continuously running into the same kind of glitches, bugs, or problems, you may have to perform that factory reset. The good news is, is that it still keeps your firmware version intact, and it still keeps all of your projects intact along with the individual settings that you had for the tracks, you're just gonna mostly lose those effects. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover for the video today. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions, you're always welcome to leave those in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time. All right, goodbye.